the city is our most developed form of civilization, and <clears throat> and we've tended, at least in recent centuries, to see progress in civilization as a progressive separation from nature, in which we transform nature, and we, and through our technology, we create our world. And embracing nature is seen as something that's primitive, as something that we did in the past. And so we designed our cities in such a way as to suppress and degrade and, and transform nature, and not really see nature as an integral part of our lives and as a measure of, of progress and economic prosperity. We're beginning to realize that we evolved in adaptive response to nature and that we have this inborn need to affiliate with the natural world that's deeply embedded in our biology and it's essential to our physical and mental health and productivity and well-being. And so the challenge is how do we bring that connection into the urban context and redefine what it means to be a city in terms of having both a built experience, a created experience, a constructed world, but also one that maintains that sense of relationship to the nat natural environment. That requires a very different vision, and as you say, a narrative of what a, a city is. And in order to have that narrative take hold, we have to really, in fact, demonstrate, which we're beginning to do, that there are adverse consequences of separation and alienation from nature in terms of our health and productivity, and that when we reconnect and restore that relationship, it actually enhances our well-being. In other words, we're not doing, bringing the city in, the nature into the city just to decorate it or to make it more aesthetically pleasing, but because it's in our own ultimate self-interest from a point of view of economic prosperity and sustainability and quality of life and health, which is, of course, important to all of us. I think the biggest obstacle is we still tend to think of the built environment as a place where humans exist and the natural environment where nature exists and that these are two separate things. And so even if we bring nature into the city, we think of it as sequestering it in particular places that we visit or we go to on occasion for recreation or relaxation or aesthetic enjoyment, but we don't see it as part of our built world. Well, the built world is where we spend 90% of our time, especially indoors, and we still maintain this dichotomy of nature is outside and humans as something that's not nature inside. If we truly want to forge a reconciliation and an integration and a mutually complementary relationship that benefits both people and nature. We have to make this an integral part of our lives, an ongoing aspect of our existence, and we can't have these hard and fast lines between the built environment and the natural environment. And that, to me, is even in our attempts to bring nature into the city, still represents a fundamental difference. And, and part of that is that we think of nature as only, not only an outdoor experience, but it's only living nature. We think of nature as plants and animals and perhaps weather, but we don't realize that nature transformed in image and representation and materials and shapes and forms has always been a part of our architecture and some of our most celebrated and revered architecture has these qualities of nature transform that's not necessarily living nature and that we can bring into our interior spaces and as a way to kind of blur the lines between the inside and the outside, between the natural world and the human world and recognize we are nature, we're a part of nature that, and that it's about creating a connection to the world beyond ourselves of which we are still and always will remain a part and dependent upon. That, if I, had a, if I had an imaginary scale of zero to 10, and 10 was the most biophilic and zero was, you know, non-biophilic, 
I'd say Singapore would be maybe a four. Having said that, the rest of the world is like two or one. Singapore is absolutely the most innovative, exciting, entrepreneurial place I've ever been from the point of view of embracing the idea that nature is, provides very fundamental benefits, uh, quality of life benefits, uh, even economic benefits, and, and has done some extraordinary uh, work in this regard, both in the design of its parks and its roads and its buildings, but on a scale of zero to 10, it's still four because it underscores how far we still have to go. I mean, Singapore, in many respects, is like most modern cities. And most modern cities, whether it be office buildings or shopping centers or manufacturing complexes or schools or hospitals, um, the, it, you know, for the most part, we, can, we design and develop in a way that is um, very much reinforces a separation, if not alienation, that we've created in the modern world between ourselves and, and nature. And we have a long ways to go to be uh, effectively biophilic. Singapore is on the leading edge of that, but still far short of the ideal.